psyops. Now we're going to talk about psychops. This is a follow-up. This can be a, a follow-up to several of the presenters so far at this uh, conference. More corruption, more cover-up, more lies, more spin. Spin, a fancy word for lies, isn't it? They're amazing how they change the names to make them not sound so bad. But Kurt Billings was on the radio one night when I left a late meeting, and it happened to be on the, tuned into the Bell Show, hosted by uh, Hilly Rose. And when I heard what he was doing, I thought, this is a follow-up to what we've had about implants in years past, and it goes on beyond quite a bit. His uh, history, his life, and his upbringing uh, fits him into this category. He's practically been in it all his life, into the uh, business of implants and that sort of thing. So without any further ado, welcome uh, Kurt Billings here for the first time at Global Sciences from Spring Hill, Florida, if you will, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, Y'all, I'm a southerner. I talk a little slower, but you're still going to want to get a paper and pencil out because I'm going to give you a bunch of laws and documents and where y'all can get information on the biochip, chemtrails, and so on. Uh, my hour presentation, 50 some odd minute presentation, is always on how to get the documents into the people's hands. While you're all looking for paper and pen, I'm going to give you a little bit of my background so you know who I am. I have been in this for about 20 years. Um, besides growing up a CIA brat. My, one of my uncles guarded Joseph Mengel and drove him around for Operation Paperclip. My dad trained CIA assassins, OSS assassins. After World War II, one of my uncles designed the North American Defense System, the Dew Line. Uh, I have been consulting on ritual abuse crimes for 14 years for police and counselors and therapists. I've been teaching counselors and therapists on MKUltra, Project Monarch, Marionette, and ritual abuse for 14 years. I've been writing, this is our fourth book, which will be on CIA and mind control. We have uh, thousands of released documents on mind control and CIA, uh, the beginnings of the microchip and so on. We're going to compile it and throw it in a book, and hopefully we're going to have it out by the end of the year. Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> Get all these cameras looking at me. So I, I guess I'm semi-qualified to talk. I come at uh, biochip, lithium chip, and chemtrail from a different perspective. I come at it from the mind control perspective. Back in uh, 1953, when MKUltra was being formed after Operation Paperclip, and I'll go into a lot of that later, they had a project called MK Delta. Now, MK Delta was the electronic end of the mind control, the LSD experiments, and all of what people know as Project Monarch. When they started to split people, after the uh, war, they figured that when they split them, a person, I've got a real bad ring. Can you turn that down just a little bit, please? When they split somebody, you have an ultra split from the personality and you have an amnesic wall. And that's just, that's a real basic thing. And as you build structure, you build alters and you build amnesic walls and so on. And I'll go into that later. But as that amnesic wall over a week, a month, or six months will start to deteriorate. And the only way they could find to take that amnesic wall and keep it in place was either electroshock or some kind of chemical. So they just start, started in 53 to develop an implantable chip by Mr. Delgado and IBM. And they started to uh, implant a microchip. And they started to draw up the plans for a biological chip in 1953 under the MK-Delta program. So this is not new technology. They may want you to think it is, but it's not. Now I'm going to do a whole bunch of laws here so that you get an idea that your government isn't really telling you a whole lot. All of this can be found on the web. My website, which I should probably give you, which is www.psychops.com. P-S-Y-C-H. OPS.com. And I'm talking slow today. I was originally I was born on the West Coast, and I can really talk fast. Okay, 
First of all, the USCS law on chemical and biological warfare uh, of, actually it was ratified in the 40s, but this is a copy from the 60s. This is um, law 1520, gives the government the right to experiment on us with radiation, chemicals, or otherwise without our knowledge and permission, only to be reported to the World Health Organization every 10 years. Of course, you all know, knew that, right? Um, 1989 Immigration and Control Act, uh, signed by another president besides this one, George Bush, uh, gives the government, the president and Congress the right to implant an electronic medium microchip under the skin without your permission. I'll do that again because there's too many mouths hanging open. 1989 Immigration and Control Act, that's a lot of the welfare titles that have been, were changed, for tracking, they gave them the right to implant an electronic medium under the skin, microchip. Now, I'll go into all this nice stuff in a few minutes. Uh, William Jefferson Clinton, in 1989, signed one of those public laws taking the biological manufacturing companies of vaccinations, flu shots, and biochips and made them harmless so you cannot sue them anymore. And that was 1989, it's August 13, 1989. It's the Biological uh, Act of 1979, and uh, 50 U.S.C. 2041 is uh, off the code of 1979, which is part of uh, the experimental laws. Which means if your kids get sick from a vaccination or a flu shot, you can't sue the vaccination or flu shot makers anymore. So what they're going to do is take the waivers away and say, oh, this is really safe. But if you ever ask if you can sue them, no, you can't. They're blameless. Also in the manufacturing of the biochip, now a biochip is made of biological material. There's no uh, metal in it, silicone in it. It's total biological material. And I'll get into a lot of detail on this in a minute is made by these same manufacturing companies. Matter of fact, it's made in the Denver area. Now, the Biological Act was uh, ratified in front of Cong the 105th Congress, which uh, Congress also ratified that the biological companies of the vaccination makers, the anthrax vaccination makers, are now blameless, which Public Law 105-230 was ratified before uh, full Congress. Of course, you all knew that, right? So what are they going to do? How are they going to put this thing in? What's going on? What's coming down? I, I heard a little news report, which I really enjoyed. Here's one of the newspapers to go with it. This is in uh, Medford, Oregon, Oregon, Washington, California, and a whole bunch of other states. January 1st are going to martial law. Now. Clinton signed an executive order, which is still kept top secret, which I've seen a copy of. I don't have a copy of it with me. When I don't have a document, I'm going to tell you. But I'm going to tell you that there's a law on the books that was signed in nine, uh, last year, which was amendment to FEMA and the prison uh, camp administration laws that gives the government the right to implant microchips to buy and sell with three days after we go into FEMA, martial law. Now, if you all don't understand what I'm talking about, most of you have heard of Iridium. Okay. I have a friend who's in Special Forces uh, who came back after Gulf Storm, Desert Storm, excuse me. And I was living in a little town in Texas, Orange, Texas, which is in right halfway between the Cajuns in Louisiana and Houston. And it's in the middle of nowhere. It's just flat oil land with swamps. And, and my buddy came back after Desert Storm and said, here, I want to show you something. Look at this. And he took, took me by the hand, put me in the car, and said, drive me to Kmart. He pulled three things off the shelf in Kmart. And this is early 90s now. And he said, look at this. Feel this. I have a chip in my hand. 
He said, scan those things to the uh, cash register lady. And then he took his hand and scanned it. I mean, it paid for it, and he walked out. And my mouth kind of hit the ground for a minute, and he said, well, we've been communicating back and forth in special forces with these biochips since before the end of the Vietnam War. And there's a satellite system all set up called the LEO system that's all ready to go. And it's so ready to go that you can buy and sell with it. The officers in special forces will go to the airport and they have a scanner on the military end and they scan it all to see what flight they're on. All the records are kept on chips in their hands. This is nothing new, believe me. I'll give you a few newspaper articles. This is the Chicago Tribune. Tiny little chip may get under your skin. You can get this in the Chicago Library. Tuesday, May 7, 1996. Talks about an implantable microchip, biochip. If you want a really must have, this is called Electronic Leash. It's seven pages long. It's by the Tucson Weekly, which is a weekly magazine. June 15th, the 21st, 1994, and you can get it in the library in Tucson. As you see, I have a little different style. I want you all to get my documents. Make sure I don't step off the stage. This goes into the implantable biochip, which was originally put together by Hughes Aircraft and MIT. And it's 1 200th the size of a hair made out of biological material, non-X-rayable. You shoot this thing with a regular hypodermic into the flesh. This is not something you're going to swallow, eat, or run in the bloodstream. And it's driven off of alkalinity in your body. What's the biological material? I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> Come on now. Give me some time. So. We have this biological chip that's going in the legs and arms. Now, since 1993 to 94, in the general public, through vaccinations and flu shots, they have putting, been putting biochips. There are 12 million plus biochips in the population right now. According to a Denver police officer, if you know the number of a person, you can track them within 10 feet anywhere in the world. I've known this for a number of years. I have an affidavit from a manufacturer and some other things, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But in the local police car, they can tap the number in, and they can look you up anywhere in the world, even in the local police level, off the internet. Now, what about the numbers? How do they get them? Well, when you get a vaccination and flu shot number, when I get through my biochip stuff, I'll take questions for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to go on to lithium chip, and then I got to go on to chemtrail, and I only got an hour. <laughs> so, what are the numbers? You take them uh, when you get a vaccination number, each vaccination number, and these are preloaded vaccinations. Each one has a number, writes into your medical record, goes into iridium, look it up on the satellite the minute it's punched into the iridium system. All your records are being dumped into the iridium right now, all your medical records, without your permission. Give you a good example. I speak for the preparedness circuit, and I was in Philadelphia, and a man from Johnson Johnson uh, came up to me, the vaccination manufacturer. He had heard me on Art Bell. By the way, I've been on Art Bell twice in the last eight weeks, and he had gotten in my face and said, "I heard you on Art Bell, and you need to explain to people that they need to take these biochips. <laughs> this is the best thing they can possibly get." Because not only do it attract their kids, but it's going to help them think because it's a programmable chip. Because the American people are stupid. <laughs> now, this is a three-day show. And at the end of my show, the last day, I had a friend of mine with Special Forces with me. I have several of them. And he had gone to go back to Fort Bragg. And there was a colonel who came up to me and played the sergeant thing in my face. And I'm standing behind my table, and I'm kind of looking at him. And I've been raised military, and I carry myself pretty good. 
This guy is about an inch out of my face, leaning over across my table, and he's saying, you're giving out national defense secrets, and this is the only way we can extract our soldiers. This is the only way we can communicate with our soldiers. This is the only way we can kill our soldiers if we have to. And I, I came at him and I said, but sir, don't you cross the line of constitutional rights when you don't tell them you're putting the chip in? Second back flu shot in Desert Storm was microchip. And, I, and he, come, he stepped back and he looked me square in the eyes and said, my soldiers do not need to think for themselves and they do not have constitutional rights. They're stupid. They think you're stupid, they think you're sheeple. You really need to go get these documents. We've got videos and audios. I'm gonna do my two second commercial. My workshop is gonna be on the history of microchip, biochip, and then I'm gonna go into mind control programming and I'm gonna show you how to take programming apart, something that nobody else does. We'll show you how it's put together and how you can take, give you a brief overview in three hours of how to take programming apart, something probably nobody else will do for you. Let's go to another piece of newspaper. This is from the uh, St. Peter's Journal in St. Peter's, Missouri, uh, Sunday, March 3rd, uh, 1996. Excuse me. Yeah, 1996. Where Mayor Tom Brown wants to make the city of St. Peter's, Missouri, the first city in the United States that everybody has to have two microchips, one in each ear. That way they can get rid of their phone system, their intercoms, and all this stuff. One is a tracking chip, excuse me, and the other one is a communication chip so they can talk to the satellites and talk to each other in town. Now this is 1996, this is a city mayor talking about this. Of course you all knew this, right? This has all been in the press. You all been told about this, you've been briefed. So this is St. Peter's, Missouri. They still will give you a copy of this if you call them. Matter of fact, they're enjoying all the attention they're getting from us. Arizona Republic, uh, Thursday, July 20th, 1989. Um, it's the state uh, section, and this is the KidScan program. And KidScan is a program where in Miami, Florida, in 1989, they implanted 8,000 kids with biochips, with a regular hypodermic. Of course, you all knew that. Let's see. Uh, Tucson Citizen um, goes into the numbering system. There are 92 billion numbers for these microchips, so they can give everybody at least two. Now for the most interesting piece I have on me. Everybody heard of the Department of Energy? Their, their website's going to get a lot of hits. You want a pen and paper. This is the Department of Energy's website on the biochip. It's a two-year-old announcement. It's www.doe.gov backslash biochip, HTM. And it's the announcement of medical uses of biochips. It's two years old. It's still on the web. Beautiful color thing comes up and then you go in a couple of pages and you get the Argonne announcement which is the same website and it's the announcement of Argonne, Motorola, Packard Bell to develop the biochip technology and to mass produce the biochip technology for other uses with billions of your tax dollars for implantable microchip. It's on the web. See, they think you all are so stupid, you're not going to go look on the web. And if you believe this, that people are going to call you crazy. But there are so many documents out there right now from, I can go to a website right now and I can order chips to implant in my friends to track them and program them. All the technology is out there. One last newspaper article, Washington Times, October 11, 1993, Martin Anderson goes into who's that aircraft and how they helped develop the biochip. Okay, here's the information that I get asked for the most. 
What do I do? How do I tell if I have a biochip or a microchip? Okay, this is not to be confused with a lithium chip. Now, a lithium chip has plexiglass with metal ends run off a lithium battery. And in the 60s, they were implanted in teeth a lot. A lot of people heard radio signals in your teeth. Unfortunately, you're a candidate for a microchip. They've been implanting them since 1958 in the general public. Those are x-rayable. And I'll get into the lithium chip in a few minutes, including a Brazilian television commercial for the microchip that you all are going to want to see. But first, let's talk about the biochip. The biochip is biodegradable. It will come apart. There's a flaw in it. And uh, one of the manufacturers of the biochip sat down with me for several hours in Denver last year when I was at the Denver Preparedness Expo. And I started telling him a little bit of what I know. He got wider and wider and wider and about passed out and I had to walk with him to the bathroom a couple of times because he was just getting so scared. How do you know all this? Well, I have friends in the NSA and the CIA and one of my uncles is still in the agency and they've been passing me information. And he said, but this is top secret. Nobody's supposed to know but 15 people. And, I, and I'm speaking on the platform at preparedness about his secrets. And he's just getting wider and wider and wider and about passed out. Now, first of all, let's cover alkalinity and acid and what this is all about. In 58, I mean, excuse me, in 43 to uh, 53, they started to develop a biological chip with a biological battery. And they tried acid and they tried alkaline in, this, in the body by running a biological system. And this is nanotechnology. And they realized that it would not run in acid. So they started changing all the biological warfare weapons. I'm going to repeat this again. All your biological warfare weapons, all your bacteria that goes with the biological warfare weapons thrive in alkalinity. Y'all catch that? Do I need to repeat that again? OK. Good group. I don't have too many deer in the headlights yet. So they started to devise stuff to run in alkalinity. Now the biochip, if you want to find out if you got one, you go to your local Walmart or drugstore and you get a swimming pool tester. Now this sounds stupid, but the chemicals that they're using, if you just test your pH, it's going to give you a straight pH of your balanced. But if you check your alkalinity against your pH, you're going to find that your pH, I mean your alkalinity is at 7, 8, 7, 10, which is the sign of alkalosis. Now, alkalosis, when you get to that point, will give you upper respiratory problems and flu-like symptoms. And when you get to 7, 8 to 7, 10, it makes you have the same effects as Luvox. It's a mind, um, it puts you in a delusional state, according to most medical books. Gee, what a coincidence. So you take and you test your body. Now your body's supposed to be 6.8. It's not supposed to be acid. It's not supposed to be alkaline. It's supposed to be balanced. And I can give you several book references on that. Uh, one of them is Prescriptions for Nutrition and Healing by James Bach. What you want to do is go look up the symptoms of alkalosis. This is going to tie to the contrails. I'm, I'm getting the chemtrails. I'm getting there. And what you want to do to dissolve your biochip is go get acid-forming vitamins and bring yourself back to 6.8, drop yourself to 6.7 for a week, and the biochip will not hold together because it's held together by alkalinity, and it will fall apart. You got to go from your 7.8, bring yourself to 6.8, down to 6.7, hold yourself there for a week, and the chip will fall apart. Now, this is easier said than done because if you start checking your water, not only bottled water that you get at your local stores, but your drinking water, if alkalinity is going through the ceiling. You're starting to find the same pesticide, ethylene dibromide, in your drinking water as you're finding from your chemtrails. And we've been all over the country. We've been home two weeks in the last six months, and we have been testing water, and they're all coming up alkaline. So you're going to have to really find a, something to pull out your alkaline and pull out your pesticide in order to get pure water, or you won't be able to bring yourself down to 6.8. Are you testing blood or urine? 
saliva. You got to get it to spit on the spit on the piece of paper. Bottom line. You need, y'all gonna need to have come, Mike. I'll take questions for a couple of minutes, and then I got to go on because I really don't have a lot of time. Saliva. It's fine with me. <laughs> I just don't want to get a ton, ton of biochip questions in the middle. I'm going to change my organization here then just a little bit. Now, a lithium chip, everybody will probably recognize this real quick. This is the animal chip. It's about a grain of rice between a man's fingers, uncooked grain of rice. This is all back on our video. You can get these pictures. You know, it shows the complexity of a lithium chip, just basic diagrams. This is a lithium chip x-rayed under the skin. You can find rounded edges. I wanted to go into. This is a Brazilian television commercial that happened two years ago. This is on our website. And here's the man putting the microchip in his ankle. Here's a close up. Here's the chip next to a regular hypodermic needle. This is half a grain of rice. This is 60s technology, what they were doing to us in the 60s in America. And it shows on their website, on Brazilian Television's website, if you got the number, you can look it up on your home computer, like I was talking about earlier. So that's a lithium chip. Now, lithium chips are x-rayable, and I talk to x-ray technicians that see hundreds and hundreds a week. There are millions in the American public. And a lot of problems with a lithium chip is lithium poisoning, where you start to get lesions, you start to get immune problems. Those all come from lithium chips. What a coincidence. So let me tell you a little bit about chemtrails and how this all ties together. I'm going to recommend this magazine. And you can get Will Thomas's books next to our table back there. But uh, this is the Free American Magazine. It's April 99. And it go, it's a whole issue on chemtrails. It goes into the testing of chemtrails. It goes into World Weekly sources. And it goes into some of the latest stuff on chemtrail. Great, great set of documents for the average person you can hand to a friend and say, here, here's it analytically analyzed in a lab. Now, let me tell you a lot about chemtrails in a short period of time. First of all, chemtrails, uh, I was on Art Bell on the second. I got 700 email, probably three or 400 pictures in 49 states and several provinces of Canada that have happened in the last week of chemtrails. Not to mention several reports of them happening out here yesterday at 6, this morning, and last night. Gee, what a coincidence. We're having a conference. Could they possibly want to douse us? Anyway, what is a chemtrail? A chemtrail is made up of three components, not two, three. And the reason why I know this is I talked to a biologist in the state of Alabama who happened to make up to some of the concoctions for the chemtrails. What a coincidence. He came and saw me. He told me number one is ethylene dibromide. Now, what is ethylene dibromide? It's a pesticide. What is a pesticide? It is an alkaline-based chemical that will go through your skin and lungs takes high concentrations of alkalinity through your skin and lungs. Gives you alkalinity poisoning, which gives you upper respiratory problems, and it drives the microchip. Yeah. Plain and simple. Number two component is the biological warfare that's going on, which they're releasing different types of bacteria in the air, which comes up with different diseases. Now, they've been doing this since 1942, aerial spraying. Salt Lake was sprayed 80 miles from there, and they had herds and herds of cattle die. This is in the Rockefeller Report, which you can get on the web, or it was 1986 the report before Congress. Senator Ted Kennedy and Rockefeller presided. And they went into all the different experiments and how they had logged them in the World Health Organization, which is the only place they really have to log them, including LSD, ELF, microwave, radiation, and chemical. 
So a good way to get rid of the, bio the biological is to keep yourself balanced because the biological, the bacteria they're dropping only thrives in alkalinity. Of course, I'm going to recommend cold eel silver and a couple of things to purify yourself, but that's not my expertise, and I let the health people do that. But stay away from anything that is alkaline because it feeds this bacteria, and anybody that's alkaline, the bacteria goes rapid in. Rabbit, as I like to call it. And then the third makeup of a chemtrail is part of the genome project. Now, the genome project, which was on public broadcasting, is where they have a aerosol spray that's able to change the DNA structure, being able to move and manipulate the DNA structure, to be able to change the cellular level to cancer, through Garrick's disease, whatever disease they want to drop on you. Now, there are 50 states. Each state is experimenting with different parts of the genome project. Each one is spraying their citizens with different parts of the genome project. So you're finding different diseases in different parts of the country. We're finding throat cancer in certain parts and blood diseases in another part and so on. And it all lines up with the different states' projects. What a coincidence. Of course, you all knew that. Well, I still got a few minutes. <laughs> Let me go into ELF, microwave, Waco, and some of the things I'm going to go in depth in my workshop, but I've got to touch a couple of things here. So these chemicals are used to experiment on us, finish the chemtrail here, and then they can, government can come along with their answer, here, take this microchip and we'll give you the vaccination or the aerosol spray, it'll change your DNA back instantly. They do have the cures for cancer right now. They're sitting on them, according to the state biologist, and they can do it with a liquid aerosol. They've done it in rats for the last 10 years. Just so you all knew. So, government once again wants to save us because we're stupid. Okay, the microchip is also a mind control device. It is receiving of an ELF signal, which is extremely low frequency on a magnetic principle. It will run anywhere from four cycles per second to 25 cycles per second, which correspond with the levels of your brain. Four cycles per second is the delta level, or your unconscious mind. 25 cycles per second is your beta level, your conscious mind and all the levels between. So they're able to broadcast through the amplification of this microchip from satellite or some other things we'll talk about in a second to be able to tell people what to do and so on. Let me give you three quick examples you can look up in newspapers. I just recently got a death threat on this one, so I, I'm going to have to do it because they told me I couldn't. <laughs> you all heard of Columbine? Okay, after I did the Art Bell show, one of the investigators emailed me and is, I've talked with. Now, I can't go say who and I can't say which force or nothing, but I can give you a, a little bit of information. One of the kids was being treated at the manufacturer of the microchip, biochip manufacturer in Denver. A year in advance of the shooting, he went to his parole officer and said, I'm hearing voices ever since they implanted this thing in me. What a coincidence. It's telling me to go buy guns in a gun show and who to kill in my classroom. And it gave them a list of names. This was reported to the police a year in advance. That hit the media and CNN for probably five minutes and it disappeared. But they had documented that these kids were being told what to do and where to go a year in advance. They were conditioned, they were programmed. All Luvox is, is a mind conditioner for microchip. Makes them more susceptible for programming. Same with uh, Thorazine or you name it, all the psychotropics. I'm not going to rattle them all off. Another interesting coincidence, several hours before and several hours after, there was a white van which license plates traced back to the Central Intelligence Agency within 100 feet of the school the whole time. What a coincidence. Of course, that didn't hit the press. 
And there's some other things I could drop, but I can't because I'm consulting and I'm being taped and so on. But if you see me at my table, I may drop a few more hints. Another little incident. Oklahoma bombing, Timothy McVeigh. He uh, got a microchip from special forces, documented by his military record, documented by his security guard record. And he was hearing voices on a special mission from the NSA to drive a rider truck around the country and park it in a certain spot, Time Magazine. He was implanted in his buttocks with a microchip. As you noticed, during his trial, he looked like a mindless person. He was programmed and brainwashed and microchipped. And he was going on, where, going where they told him to do. I have seen, which I can't talk about, photographs of the rider truck on one of the military bases just before the explosion, the day before. What a coincidence. And we're going to talk about Jonesboro, Arkansas. Kid was being treated, the older kid was being treated in Minnesota at the other part of Hughes Corporation where they were inventing the microchips for hearing voices. What a coincidence. He was told, according to the George Barrow newspaper, he was hearing voices, which he called the voice of God, telling him where to break in and get the gun to do the shoot, where to position himself on the hill, and how to draw the kids out to do the proper shooting. It all disappeared. What a coincidence. What do all of these three things have in common? Well, two of these, well, actually, three of these things have in common. The day before, each one of these things happened, there happened to be a gun bill or an anti-terrorist bill put in. Could it possibly be the government controlling this? No, not at all. No, no, we're just still stupid. We don't believe the government could do anything like that. How many of you all heard of cellular towers? Okay, we're all in the cellular age. According to Lucid Technology, cellular towers are supposed to be 200 feet apart. If the lights haven't gone on yet, the ELF configuration and the cellular configuration are close enough that you would have to have an electrical engineering degree to tell them apart. They are now paying churches, patriot groups, and people like you to put it in their backyard so they can be beamed by ELF. They're paying them several thousand dollars a year to put these towers in their backyard. And all of a sudden, the Christian church is having a revival and hearing the voice of God, or somebody's being heard, and so on. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of reports on this that I'll go into in my workshop. How do you tell if you're being beamed by ELF? The technology is so simple, you can put it in a sh uh, shoebox. Well, here's how David Koresh heard. Waco, this was before the Congress hearings where they admitted they were using an ELF signal on the Branch Davidians several weeks in advance. I'm going to tell you a side story, and I'll go to the, come to this. I just bought myself a Gateway laptop about six, about eight weeks ago. And I was on the phone with their technical support, talking about a little bit of Y2K compliance and some other things. And I got on the phone a Marine who just retired and went into reserve and was one of the Gateway techno technical Technologists, there I go. And his job in the Marine Corps was, he was a psych ops in charge of one of the psych ops departments. And he would be flown around to do ELF beaming. He asked me what I did for a living. Oh, I said I write books on psychological operations in the CIA. And he said, did you know that there were active duty Marines stationed at Waco during the whole siege and they were running the psych warfare? Of course, you all knew that, right? Posse comitatus, maybe? And he went on to tell me that they were beaming in signals to the Branch Davidians, torturing them two, three weeks in advance. I'll tell you what they are and who did it, who made the tapes in a minute. In advance. And he would start a sentence and I would finish it. And he said, you're crazy. Nobody's supposed to know this stuff and they're going to think you're crazy anyway. So here he is beaming the Branch Davidians. And I told him what they were beaming, and he went, you're right. Everybody heard of Ricks, the spokesman for the FBI at Waco? Well, if you take the 
night disturbance music that they played. Nancy Sinatra, these boots are made for walking, which I don't have my tape recorder with me today. I already play it so you can hear it. And you listen to it, you'll hear a signal like it goes vroom, 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 vroom in the background. And this was all over the news reports and CNN. Everybody always asked me, what's this? What's this? Well, it's an ELF signal. So what you do is you slow this down and play it backwards. This isn't reverse speech. This is, was put in backwards so the press couldn't play it, play it backwards and figure out what the signal was. And what it does is like a hypnotic suggestion. Your mind, once it gets past the alpha state, there's no backwards or forwards. It's like the subliminal in the popcorn. You can turn it around just as quick. So they decided to put it in subliminally. But if you turn around, you play it slowly, you'll hear a southern man from Texas with a bad drawl saying, you're all going to die. We're going to rub you out. We told the press we were going to let you go free, but we're not. You're all going to die. We're going to burn you out. Every man, woman, and child was hearing this 24 hours a day. If that isn't premeditated murder, I don't know what is. Just a little bit there. Let's see. Where do I go from here? Now, I got to get back to Operation Paperclip and try to tie this all together in about five minutes. <laughs> Cover about 40 years of history. During Operation Paperclip, we brought the best and the brightest doctors over, Joseph Mengele, Heinrich Mueller, and others, which were all trained by Tavistock. Now, Tavistock and the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute were all funded by the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and the Illuminates, or Illuminati, and the Plutocrats. Just so you understand, there are 12 families in the 13th bloodline. If I started rattling off the names of the Illuminati, most of you would think I was nuts because most of them are Jones and Smith and Campbell. There's only one major name you might recognize, and that's Rockefeller. The rest of them are very anonymous names. Anybody tells you otherwise is lying to you. I got all the documents to prove that, but that's a little side note. So they brought over the Nazi doctors and Joseph Mengele, and Joseph Mengele brought over some of his genetic experiments. Now, at the same time that Kaiser Wilhelm and Tavistock were together, um, Rockefeller started putting in the eugenic program and doing breeding and started funding the uh, Nazi programs also. So they were funding both sides of the war for experiments and figuring out who could do what fastest. So it was all put together by the same people. So I'm going to jump ahead because I don't have time enough to do the history on this and go to the Presidio in about 1962, 1963. And I got to sit down and have lunch with Joseph Mengele and several of his kids that he'd brought over and several ladies as a kid of a CIA operative. Just so you know that I've seen him with my own eyes. And yes, he was on American soil. And all the South American stuff is garbage. He died on American soil. Just so you all had a, had a grip on the reality of the spinmeisters. So when they put together MKUltra, which is mind control, control with a K, as in the German pronunciation of mind control, they started to run out of victims so fast that they decided to hire the different psychological associations. And uh, we spent several million dollars in Canada to teach Dr. Cameron. There were four original teaching doctors, which I'll get into my seminar and show how this all fits together. I don't have time. It takes me about two hours to put this together. But if you want to go get the Times Colonialist, November 18, 1992, it says brainwashing victims to receive $100,000 each. The only people that sued the CIA for mind control and won. And what they would do in Canada and here is they would put them in what they call a sleep state. And I'm telling you people, they did not use LSD. That was a cover to get people stoned and do some experiments. What they were using is stuff like Luvox and psychotropics and electroshock. And what they would do is take a person to the point of them breaking, to break them into multiple personality. Now, this programming started way back in Pavlov. And actually, I could go back to ancient ritual witchcraft in the Necronomicon. 
and slave temples in Egypt and so on. I, can't, I'm not, I don't have time to do history. So they started to chemicalize this and make this into a science and make this into multiple personality disorder and make this into different programs under MKUltra. Now I want you to hear me real clearly because there's a lot of misinformation on MKUltra. People mention that there's a Project Monarch and I rattled off a bunch of different project names. MKUltra was the main project. Project Monarch was a type of programming. It was set up on monarchy. A uh, marionette was set up on a marionette where they would actually string the victim up in an airplane hanger on puppet strings and uh, break them and tie altars to each one of the puppet strings and the, the person couldn't do anything without the puppeteer or handler. It was a form of programming. And each different programming had a different thing from drug running to assassins to uh, infiltration to whatever CIA operative they wanted to have that would have no knowledge to flying electromagnetic machines working in area all the different areas, underground bases. All these people had a lot of programming and Montauk. All, all, most of the Montauk people will run through some of the MK Ultra programming. So what they would do is start to split these people and build layer upon layer of splitting amnesic walls and structure, which I have no time to get into. Each one of these amnesic walls has to be held in by either extreme trauma, hypnotic double binds, or fear, or microchip, for to redo the uh, ECT, or electric shock. So the first microchips were designed to electric shock the people. So that's why microchip. And they saw that the more the different chemicals they used helped the programming along. That's why the chemtrails are basically mass programming the American public to become mind, mindless slaves. That's their goals. They're not trying to kill you. They're just trying to make you into their slaves. Those that you are not going to comply are going to wind up in a FEMA concentration camp. That's already on the law books. People like me are just going to disappear. I'm on every list you want to think of, and then some. I'm going to skip this portion because I don't have time because I want to take some questions and go into a little bit of this. The basis of MK Ultra was set up to program somebody to do various tasks, and they started out back in the 40s of being able to program somebody to go through a lie detector test and say they're from Mars and pass it. So you could take an assassin who was programmed like James Earl Ray or other people who went to Russia who supposedly killed Kennedy or um, somebody who killed Bobby Kennedy and programmed the snot out of them and they would have a false front. Alters present in threes. So you'll have these three alters locked in when they get their hand signal or their trigger. Or I could do hand signals for the next 10 minutes. But it, once this person is triggered with an audio, audible signal or flash a domino or a card or a different hand signal, then these three altars would come up and lock in. And then they would go do their mission or their task, anywhere from killing to going and infiltrating a group. So Joe Smith comes to the local Patriot group in Georgia. I'm giving you an actual case, but I'm changing the names. And this man sits in the Patriot group movement for about a year. By that time, he had everybody's name, address, phone number, and a license plate. And then he comes up to the leader of the group a year later and says, Let's go plant a bomb in the Olympic Park. And uh, all of them are arrested. Now that they've pinned it on Eric Rudolph, these people have gotten out, but they were arrested and were in jail for six months. But they were set up by an MK Ultra victim who had no idea that they were setting the people up. He thought he was an actual member of the group. He didn't even know he was an informant. So it's the ultimate infiltrator. They don't know they're informing. They don't know they're assassinating. All they're doing, running on, is the hand signals and the handler. The handler is the person who gives the hand signals or keeps track of the person. And then you have the programmer who does the original programming. And there's hierarchy in this, too, which I don't have time to do. So an assassin would be thinking he's going along his merry way and then is triggered to go do something doesn't has a total amnesic wall when he is done doing the act. 
So if somebody's going to kill, like Sirhan Sirhan, he thinks he killed Kennedy, even though he probably never had the gun near it, near him. He was the patsy, Timothy McVeigh, programmed, set up, ready to go. <laughs> I'm halfway through my presentation. <laughs> I got five minutes. So you all might want to line up for uh, questions, because it's and I'm, I'll give you my little bit of overview here. Today's technology with virtual reality and different drugs, they can do what they did in MKUltra. It took them months to do in 15 or 20 minutes with the latest programming. So I could grab one of you people out of the stands, take you to a room, hook up the proper chemicals and proper virtual reality program. You've been there, done that, you're split, and you don't know what you're supposed to do in a matter of minutes, and it's the same programming. The technology has come a long ways. I'll be doing a workshop on this. Go ahead. How do you implant the chip through a hypodermic uh, needle? Um, there are preloaded needles. Uh, they're set up so that the uh, chip is, goes through a, will go through a vaccination gun or needle. It looks like a little bitty black speck. To see it at all, you really have to see it in a microscope, and it easily goes through a vaccination needle. Does that answer your question? It goes into the flesh or muscle. Do you have any idea of what the helicopters are doing that have the antenna hanging off the bottom of them? ELF okay. and microwave. If you're getting microwaved, you'll feel heat in your body. They have a gun that will actually shoot a microwave beam at you, and it's like a stun gun, but it doesn't have to hit you, and your body heats up, and if they heat you so high, it'll either get you in a delusion or your heart will actually explode. Now, the ELF go, is able to dream program. Could that account for extreme high blood pressure and yes, really not feel the blood pressure in your body? Yes, But not be able to read your blood pressure? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to know a little bit more about the uh, introduction of the, uh, the bio chip into the person's body. Are they doing it to uh, babies being born, let's say? Uh, like California. They always, they always give you a vitamin K, you know, shot just after they're born. California and Missouri both have laws that every baby that is uh, born in the hospital gets a microchip in the heel, is according to one of the Kansas City newspapers, because they had a baby stolen out of the hospital, and they found it by satellite tracking. Uh, California is also a mandatory microchip law for every baby in the hospital, yes. We're keeping up on your information. Do you have website? Do you have uh, books, pamphlets? Uh, I've got a book coming out. I've got videos and audios. I'm back on ta table 15. Website is www.psychops, P-S-Y-C-H-O-P-S, Dot com, and I, you'll learn more in our work, my workshop in three hours than you probably have ever been educated unless you sit down with some of these electrical wizards or so on. You said we could get vitamins or something like that? You can go to a health food store if you have a biochip and you're running at the point of alkalosis. Treat yourself for alkalosis, which is acid-forming vitamins like calcium and other things. Intercon therapy, uh, which is a line of vitamins, has an acid-forming vitamin for alkalosis you can take. It uh, takes some vitamins because there's so much alkali bombardment, so you have to get yourself back down to 6.7. Is there an odor to the chemtrail? Yes. What does it smell like? Anywhere from garlic to crude oil. It will leave a black film. Some of them are actually black in color now. Uh, up in the Seattle area, I, f I have heard and found and have talked to witnesses at the end of McCord that they're now spraying at night over rain clouds so that the rain brings it down so it kind of washes some of the odor and the, the residue have gotten a little wiser since all our reports on Art Bell. I've been down in Mexico and I've been smelling this odor in the morning and I came back to Boulder and I smell the same odor in the morning. Correct. And it just comes right in I've, the I've gotten a lot of reports from Mexico. Wow. Question, would the distilled water help the alkaline? Uh, it could. It depends if there's a bacteria in it or not. You have to wind up checking your, your water distiller and the things you're taking for chemicals out of it because a lot of filters will not get pesticides and bacteria. You had to add things to it like ozonation or being able to electronically charge the particles. Yes, ma'am. Bacteria thrives in an acid environment, and there, we get plenty of acid through soda pop. I mean, it's 3.0 is, is your average soda pop because it's phosphoric acid. I understand, so, but... 
Um, they have genetically made bacteria that thrive in alcohol. I mean, alkaline. Al al because bacteria thrives in acidity. And I mean, caffeine, coffee, tea are very high in acid. I've so got, we're getting a lot of acid. I got 11,000 pages of report from the CIA that <laughs> talks about this, which I'm going to put in my book. But yes, some natural bacteria thrives in acid. I'm not arguing with you. Cancer and a lot of things thrive in acid. I'm not telling you to, to go acid. I'm telling you to stay balanced. Your alkaline, the designer bacteria is that the uh, warfare system is all designed in alkaline. Any more questions? All the bottom line here is don't take any more vaccinations, don't take any more flu shots, um, start to protect yourself uh, with vitamins, start to detox yourself, and uh, we're going to be posting uh, the latest stuff that we find out about genome and how to counteract things on our website. Right now we're in the information thing trying to get out as much, blow out as much information as we can to get people so that they can go get the documents for themselves, start showing their neighbors, because I mean it, they are out after you. Yes, sir? So you would say not to let your children have vaccinations? You bet. When did that start? Uh, vaccinations uh, started, question was when does it start? It started in 93, 94. I've got the time up sign. Uh, and uh, hey, you've been a great audience. Catch me at my table, catch my workshop. Thank you very much. <laughs>